one of our talents as writers is presenting the same material in a different way. We're not making new things up about them, but we're adding a little bit more flavor. We're using more relaxed language. So we were talking about storytelling, why storytelling is so important and that you've got this storytelling piece that can really differentiate one person from another. I often give the very simple example of someone, you know, hitting 100% quota or 110% quota. Most sales professionals will say that, but it's the how they did it and then the context. And that's where the story comes in. And and I think it makes it from my perspective as as a writer as well, it makes it more fun because we get to explore a little bit into the personal life of the client to some degree, you know, on the professional, personal level, and then figure out how to work that in so that it does become distinctive and unique and interesting, as opposed to just taking the business facts and kind of regurgitating them in a more professional way um, that you might have to do if you don't have the underlying story. So I, I, for me, it's more satisfying as well. Yeah. And then as we are going to look at, you have the information that you need to not just write the resume, but also the LinkedIn profile, which we know needs to be more connective. Um, What have you been seeing in terms of your LinkedIn profiles and storytelling? I want to take a step back and talk about the resume just a little bit. And that is, I think the resume is the hardest to put the story into because it's the most traditional and structured document. So on LinkedIn, we have a lot more freedom to do that and particularly in the about section. But I think it's also important to carry that through into the experience sections. And, and like, I think like many of us, I'm probably the most critical of my own work. So you go back and you look at something and you say, "Mm, I could have put more story in there. I could have done something. I mean, a good example would be a client that I worked with recently who has a hobby of um, ballroom dancing. She's a competitive ballroom dancer. On the professional side, she's a general counsel. So she's the legal person at a company. So kind of a, you know, a disconnect. So I really wanted to work that into her stuff, into the competitiveness, the preparation, the, the ability to, you know, put on the performance, even if you're not feeling it at the moment that, that, that I thought might work well. And quite honestly, she was not ready for that. She wanted to really keep that somewhat separate. So sometimes we have to deal with what the client wants. They need to feel absolutely confident and comfortable with what we're doing. But it would have been so much fun to do something for her in in LinkedIn that would have kind of brought those threads together in her personality. Um, But maybe next time we'll see who the next one comes along. (laughs) <laughs> well, and this is a good point, right? Because sometimes our clients might not be comfortable with it yet. We may tell the story and they may dial it back and that that's okay. At least we're getting a little bit of the storytelling in there. And I've got to say that getting examples and samples from people, I'm still seeing mostly a copy and paste in the experience section for LinkedIn profiles. So I think that there's still room for people there to write those as if they were a story to connect a little bit more and think about it, that as a story as well, instead of just a copy and paste from the resume. Yeah. Oh, I agree hundred percent. And particularly because for me, it, the whole tone is so different. You're reading an interesting story or, you know, a summary about, you know, you're learning about the person and then you go to the experience and it's chop, 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 resume, resume, resume that just feels lazy from, from the perspective of, of the, the writer. And also it feels um, just disconnected from the story that you've just read. So I think it, it's not a good thing. And if you think about it, one of our talents as writers is, is presenting the same material in a different way, right? So we have the same, we're not making new things up about them, but we're adding a little bit more flavor. We're using more, um, you know, different, more relaxed language, um, so we're, we're doing it in the form of, you know, well, when I joined the company, this was going on. It's just a little bit more conversational, but it's really reiterating many of the same points in the, in the resume, but we're doing it in a way that feels to me more natural in the LinkedIn profile. Yeah. Jean is saying she wrote some of uh, profile for someone that had run 26 marathons. Yeah. How you can put that into that story. And it has to, well, it doesn't have to, but it's much more engaging If it connects, sometimes the story is kind of disconnected from the audience or the goal and you feel that like that was a fun story, but (laughs) like, why was it there? And I love how you do this, Louise, really weaving the two together. Yeah, Jean, and I totally get that because I had a client once who was one of these 
he was like, he did these extreme hundred mile races, uh, marathons in the desert. I mean, the guy's a, a maniac, obviously. So he would do this and we worked it in right at the beginning of the, of the, of the about section, because it really was reflective of his, you know, all or nothing, full steam ahead, go get him attitude that he brought to business. And I'm sure that you, uh, you enjoy, you know, took maybe a similar theme with your, with your client who can run 26 marathons. I mean, that's just an incredible accomplishment. It takes a lot of preparation and hard work and grit and determination. So I think that makes it fun too. Yeah, I love that. Well, let's show a few examples here. So Louise, I'm just going to pull up the document that you sent to me. And there's a mix of examples, but this one that you had the pre-K to higher education, making that transition and you're connecting the dots here in this example. Yeah. The first thing that I, I when I wrote this uh, for this client, the summary section, it, it starts off saying she's a joyful educator, which is a word that I don't know that I've ever used before in a resume. And when she got that, she was over the moon because she said it perfectly described what she brought. So when you're thinking about how to incorporate story into the resume, sometimes it can be not the story, but the theme, the thread, the characteristic that that perfectly illustrates that particular person. And then in the other documents, you can kind of carry that same theme along. So sometimes it's just choosing the right descriptive terms um, without going overboard with the fluff, as you know, any of you who know me know that I, I don't go for that at all. Um, but I want to get in there something that is going to not appear on probably any other resume that people are looking at for these kinds of jobs. And as an educator and someone who, who trains teachers, I think that's a really great quality to bring to it. So think sometimes about the adjectives that we're using or the qualities that we're bringing into a resume and not just story elements or, um, you know, business-like language. Yeah. And we'll see that again here in one of your other examples where just the term you use, and I think I stuck one of mine in here in the middle, and then we'll get to your other one where you use a term that just brings it all together. This is an experience section of a resume. And I know many of us are doing this. I just wanted to put it in here um, because there's a few stories in the bullets that really just speak to you know, they were responding early to COVID-related supply chain challenges. So this person had like created the systems to deal with that before it was even a problem. And, you know, how wonderful would it be to hire someone that does that, that can actually solve the problems before they become a problem? So there's just some stories in here that may be similar to what you're talking about in your resumes. Again, it's that context that makes this person stand out. You know, any other supply chain person can say that they've created risk management tools, but to create a tool that essentially solved COVID supply chain problems before they even happened, that's pretty cool story. So it's just a few little details in the story that, of course, gets expanded on in other formats that can draw in that that reader. And, and as you said at the very beginning, just to differentiate our person because of that context uh, around what they were doing. And that is a challenge for us as writers. Of course, we love a good challenge because you've got a two-line bullet, I think is what it is there. And yet you've been able to get some of the unique story elements into it. And that is the challenge that we're, we're not going into these long, dense stories in a resume that, quite frankly, no one is going to read. So we need to keep it short and choose the words carefully and choose exactly the information that we want to present. So um, nothing ever is boring in resume writing. It's always some, some new challenge. Yes, yes. And you're balancing, you know, this bullet did not go on to four lines. It changed my format when I pasted it in here. It was still on three lines, but you're balancing that. You know, sometimes we think, oh, every bullet needs to be a one liner. Well, right. that actually feels a little choppy and weird. It's okay to have a few two line, definitely. And even a few three line bullets, as long as the, the content is telling that story and really focused on how it adds value. Exactly. I totally agree with that. I don't like it. You know, just like I wouldn't arbitrarily make a resume two pages, I'm not I'm not going to arbitrarily make a bullet one line or two lines for the sake if, if it means eliminating something valuable. Right. So then you had this other one of the chief administrative officer. And uh, just looking at a few of the language pieces in here, I could see the story coming through. 
Well, I think another way, so when we think about resumes, how do we get story in there or how do we infuse some of this uniqueness? In this case, this top part of the of the um, summary, the headline, subheading, couple of, you know, what she's good at stuff or he um, is fairly is fairly standard what I would write. And the way that I work to get some of the uniqueness in is through endorsements. And he had really fantastic endorsements. I, I chose four of them from his LinkedIn profile and put them in there because they they flesh out the picture. You really can't say the same things about yourself that other people will say about you, about how wonderful you are, right? Somebody else needs to say that. So having a, the endorsement section right up there as part of the top of the resume automatically gets into the character of the person and lets that uniqueness shine through. And then those um, stories and examples will certainly be fleshed out in the rest of the resume and then LinkedIn and then during the interview process. Yeah. Yeah, and using a, a quote or a testimonial. So Jackie wrote in here that she created one with a quote from Steve Jobs. And you always want to be thoughtful about will this quote resonate with the audience or not? You know, there might be certain audiences, I don't know, they, they, they don't like Steve Jobs. So you want to think about that connection and using a quote. And then, as she said, springboarding, springboarding off of that in terms of how the, the client embodies that quote. Yeah, I like that. I remember when that ad came out, Think Different, there were grammarians saying it should be th Think Differently. And there was all kinds of, of chatter about whether that was grammatically correct. Um, and, and But obviously, it worked for Apple, and it certainly uh, conveyed the uniqueness of Apple, right? They're doing things different or differently than, than other people. So um, if you're as long as your client was like that, Jackie, it sounds like he was, it's a perfect quote to use for him. So then we get into um, this next example, and this is one of the ones that we use in the class. And I'm just going to show the link, the resume piece of it, where you worked with someone that had a very kind of all, not all over background, but a varied background. And that can be challenging too. How do you tie all those pieces together? She did. She was a great client. And what was interesting about her was she had been literally an Olympic athlete, but that was not what anything to do with what she wanted to do now. She had been through a couple of different careers and she also didn't want to hark back and make that the centerpiece of her story because that had happened 20 years ago when she was, you know, 18 years old or something like that. Um, so I, but I wanted to make the case for how she got where she is today because she's making another career shift. So I used some of that language referring to Olympic athlete. I use it in the um, in the summary. The bottom bullet point then calls her an Olympic athlete because that taught immense um, character. Um, you know, it, it taught her how to set goals, achieve goals, work hard for things, um, all the good things that you can imagine from an athletic, uh, competitive athletic career. And those were things that she certainly carries through today. But we didn't make that the real centerpiece of either the resume or the LinkedIn profile, because that would, was against what she wanted to focus on. But we mentioned it because it's certainly a part of her. Right. And you really focused on the business savvy in the, the top part of the, sum, the summary, especially because that's going to translate from whatever industry the person had been in into the wine industry. That business savvy is needed no matter what type of business, right? Exactly. And then when we went to the LinkedIn, we made it a lot more overt in that about section, like how, you know, how the heck did I get from Olympic athlete to, I think she was a consultant at KPMG, and then she became a wine expert. What's the story there? So I, I framed it around, you know, this is, this is, how did I get here? These are the skills that I used in every single one of those roles. Because then, when, especially when people are making a kind of a dramatic career shift and people say, you know, what the heck, where'd this come from? There's always something from their past that points to their future. They've always loved something or they were always good at something or they hated doing something else that kind of prompted them to go in a new direction. And if you can make connect those dots for readers, it's going to be much better than if there's they're wondering about all that stuff. So we use that and then I, I used language to tie it together at the end, talking about turning in a champion performance and just making sure that, you know, we're, we're tying up the loose ends, but not making the Olympics the centerpiece of it, but using the skills, the talents and, you know, what she had demonstrated throughout her life as part of her character and her story. 
Right. I saw someone in the Facebook group asking recently, you know, how do I write for someone that was a professional football player years ago? And that's a part of their story. It's interesting, but we don't want to make it the focus. And it kind of feels like, well, what have you done since then? You're still hanging on to that really old. It can just make you feel funky, like you're still in high school. Right. And that and sometimes people's uh, accomplishments, even if they weren't athletic, are a long time ago and we can weave those in without making it feel like that's still too big of a part of their identity. Exactly. And and I do that with college students too, who've been in sports, but aren't going on to professional sporting careers. They still learned a lot from that sporting activity. Um, Someone on Facebook says, I often find adding a few words, what my client was up against fortifies their accomplishments. The challenge context. Absolutely. When you can describe what they were up against, whether it's a particular job when they were hired or something in their life or their career, that really makes readers understand better what they were able to accomplish and, you know, what kind of person they are. So I think that's an excellent idea um, to use that context and really uncover that. What was going on? What were you up against? What was the challenge there? And then framing their achievement within the context of that challenge. Yeah. And I was just thinking that there was some other place and I, it must've been in one of these examples, but I just moved it or lost it where you had a verb that just stuck out. And sometimes it's just those little bits of language. And as you were talking about the, um, the bit of context and the descriptor of joyful, I really find that we have to choose our descriptors so carefully today, because if we use too many of them, they just feel so hollow and shallow. And we want to use ones that really do capture our client's essence and use maybe one or two in a summary and that's it, right? If we get too many of them in there, it just feels very, um, very strange. And in LinkedIn, it can actually feel even more strange. So this was an assignment that a student did for me a while ago actually before we started the storytelling class. And um, the before was just something that you would never say about yourself. And on LinkedIn, I always want to think about it as you're introducing yourself to someone on the street, but you're not on the street, right? You're on LinkedIn, but you want to think about it as I'm introducing myself to someone on the street. And you'd never walk up to someone and say, I'm a smart, empathetic, loyal, and rational individual. (laughs) You just wouldn't, that doesn't, that doesn't work. And so this was a, an assignment where then we had the student rewrite it. And the after is my happy place is resolving client issues by breaking down problems and using methodical approach. So you get that this is who I am. Instead of me describing who I am, I'm just telling you who I am. And that can be a a very subtle shift. But instead of using the descriptors describing who I am, I'm just going to tell you the stories that demonstrate or illustrate who I am. And when we do that, it just has a different voice and it's a lot easier to read. It doesn't feel so much like a cover letter and cover letter language can work, but it can feel a little strange in a LinkedIn summary. And and I think even in resumes and cover letters, because we see so many of the same words, the, the descriptors, you know, energetic, enthusiastic, you know, there's a million of the adjectives that people use and, and you ha- we have our own favorites. I know, and I know I do, uh, but when we use them too much, they all start to sound the same. Every document starts the same and that's not what we want. Um, so, so one of my missions is when I'm writing a, a profile section on the resume, particularly is how many of these can I get rid of and still have a meaningful and rich description of the person. And and it's a challenge, but I'm always working toward that. Thank you so much for joining me today. Well, it's always fun to talk about this stuff. 